All right, hey guys. So just moved in my new place. I've been here a couple days, but I wanted to do just a sort of announcement because some of you guys who want, uh, read my blog know about this, but because uh, I posted about it. But um, I recently made a little script that will help people set up an email server, and it's not the. It doesn't work 100% of the time. Uh, it works in specific situations, but I want to tell you how it works and why I did it. Um, so for the longest time. I've always had like my own email address, like Luke at LukeSmith.xyz, uh, for my domain name. But I've never actually hosted an email server. I mean, I did actually. There was a brief period a while back, but um, I never really. I didn't really have it the way I wanted. Um, but last week or so, or maybe two weeks ago, I decided to actually finally set it up with everything I needed to like have uh, an email set up. So. In the process, I'll go ahead and say in, installing an email server is sort of a pain. There are a bunch of moving pieces that have to fall into place for it to work perfectly. Um, and so in the process of, you know, maybe three or so days, I was, you know, I'd log on, I'd play around with it a little bit. Uh, maybe I'd mess something up. Maybe I'd have something that I don't really want. And I'd end up wiping it like over and over again until I got it right, which I probably did it like four or five times, frankly. Realistically, that, you know, when the first time you set up an email server, that's how it's going to happen. Uh, that's what every, everyone I talked to would set up an email server, like just remember it as a, as a miserable process. But um, I think I eventually was like, you know, the easiest way to do this would just be to totally replicate all my commands in a script so I can monitor what I'm doing and I could make sure that I'm doing everything all at once. So that's what I did. I basically wrote a script. You can check it out here. Um, actually, you can download it. I have it linked from my website, so you can just run this command on your server. Um, now, it doesn't work everywhere. It's not like universal. It worked in my specific environment. Here's the script itself. And um, I'm using a Debian web server or just any Debian server. It doesn't have to be an Apache web server or something like that, but a Debian server. On, hosted by Vulture. Now, it might work on Ubuntu, and it might work on other VPS hosts. Um, I haven't tried them. I suspect that it'll work on other VPS hosts, and it, you know, it might work on Ubuntu. Ubuntu might come with different defaults, but uh, this works for a Debian install on a Vulture VPS. So if you you can just you can get one of those and run the script and you will have your own email server. Uh, you have to set you know you'll set up your spam the spam assassin uh, settings later. Actually, I should set, tell you it sets up a Dovecot postfix mail server and that's usually what you people want. Uh, it sets up some sensible defaults like so you don't you're not like one of those old you know boomers who uses like a spool file or something like that. It actually has a mail deer in you know uh, your mail directory. Um, and of course, you can log in with MB Sync or any of that kind of, you know, like I have Mutt Wizard, it works perfectly with Mutt Wizard, of course. And, and really, I made it to make it easy with that. It also installs Spam Assassin. And importantly, one thing that people often forget is Open DKIM. And that is basically for sending mail to like Gmail and Yahoo, because Gmail and Yahoo and other, you know, big name accounts like that, they'll also, they'll often have these sort of spam filters, but they'll reject email totally that comes from addresses that are unfamiliar or unverifiable. So open DKIM basically allows it so you can send mail to Gmail and stuff like that. Uh, there are some people who go, go without that, but I, I assume basically everyone wants it. Um, and I will say that I did make some design decisions that I like, maybe you don't like, but for example, I don't use a SQL database. I think that was sort of a waste of I, I don't know. I just don't use it. Instead, like, people often use SQL databases to like log into the server to store user logins. I'm like, nah, that's too much. Um, so I just use like the native, you know, the PAM, the, like the Unix login system or whatever. And, and what that means is when you're on the server, if you create a user and you create a user and add it to the mail group, well, that's now a mail account. So that's that's what I like. You don't have to have any extra um, da database. I will say if you use this with um, Mutt Wizard. You do want to have the login name, your username, not just uh, the email address. So you give you'd give Mutt Wizard your full email address, and then when it asks for a login, you'd only give you know your name. So like in my case, my login would be Luke because my user is Luke. Okay. Um, so again, uh, it gives I give some of the requirements here. There are some a couple things you have to set up manually. You have to um, you have to set up an MX record. The script doesn't do that because you know it might be different for different providers. Uh, you have to have Let's Encrypt, 
before you start. So do that. Um, let's encrypt specifically for mail dot whatever dot your you know domain. And um, you'll also at the end you have to add a text record for open DKIM. Uh, and that's just to you know verify the email address. And I will say I do have this long section where I basically say, uh, this is not supposed to work for everyone. Don't expect this script to fail. Expect it not to work and expect, you know, being able to debug it. It's really just to show you uh, because I don't know how different everything is on different machines. Um, oh, and by the way, um, uh, since if you are going to get a Vulture account just because I'm doing this, you might as well click on like I have a referral link for them. And I think it gives you a $50 credit. And if you stay stay with them for some amount of time, if you spend through the $50 credit and then more, I think I get some kind of kickback. I've never actually got one because, because I only started doing this recently. Um, there have been a lot of people who joined it, but it takes like a year or so for people to spend through the credit. But do click that just because, yeah, I don't know, why not? Gets you money, gets me money. Um, but I think that's about it. Um, so check it out, play around with it. Again, Debian web server on Vulture, that's where it totally works. You do have to set a couple things up. Again, just check the requirements section. Um, but it, it works well for me. I actually, as a test, I wiped my email server a couple times just to make sure that it was still working. Uh, and yeah, it works without a hitch. Uh, works pretty much. But if you have any problems that, you know, might be universal, you might want to ask me, but uh, again, use at your own risk, use at your own hazard. But I just wanted to throw this video out there because I know it's going to be useful for someone. But uh, anyway, so I got a lot of work to do at my new house. You can actually probably tell this room is extremely echoey. So I got to do something about that. I have some sound pads and some other things I'll probably throw in here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll probably be recording stuff. And if you see this video, that's good news because it means I can actually upload stuff slowly, but I can upload stuff.